people you need an introduction, such as seven logic of Rutgers, and you will talk about effective field theory and capability. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, uh, so just uh, as Walker said, I'm going to uh, discuss um, uh, discuss um, integrability uh, integrability in effective field theories. Uh, uh, this is a part of ongoing project. Hopefully, I will be able to report part of the ongoing project to his uh, uh, Fyodor Smirnov. I will say uh, uh, from upstart that uh, uh, First, all uh, consideration would be limited to flat two-dimensional space. Space, space Euclidean or Minkowski space-time. And uh, I will um, make my discussion on very pedestrian level, a uh, very simple simple-minded level because I'm simple-minded person and uh, uh, there is a, in this um, report uh, I mean in this project there is a uh, so no uh, young Baxter algebras would young Jens and stuff like that will uh, appear uh, in this uh, in this uh, I will uh, report some result which uh, which requires uh, really heavy duty calculations, uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, well exclusively uh, due to further, and uh, and uh, I will just quote the result. All right. Anyways, uh, 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 let me make some introduction. Start with some introduction, and uh, that is basically introduction as usual is just reading the, the title, right? So uh, we want to, let me remove that. And uh, so we want to say what I mean by field theories. Then I would say what I mean by effective field theories. And then, you know, uh, integrable effective field theories. All right, so I, I will understand the, uh, uh, I, I will understand field theories, quantum field theories, uh, proper quantum field theories, in uh, in the most simple, again, in the most simple-minded way. Uh, the the prototype uh, will be uh, perturbed CFT. So uh, I will have, I will think of some sort of uh, 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 formal action. Which is uh, action of conformal field theory plus some uh, perturbation which involves uh, 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 a number of relevant operators. These are relevant uh, scalar fields of CFT. Uh, one can ask what it means, and uh, and I mean it's it's just uh, uh, I think it the, the, this 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 uh, formal action could be interpreted uh, directly in terms of the Wilson's uh, definition of quantum field theory. So we have some sort of fixed point. This is a CFT, the renormalization group fixed point. So this is 
RG interpretation. And uh, there is an unstable manifold associated with this fixed point. Uh, uh, this uh, is a, a union of, of uh, RG trajectories which uh, originates, which uh, can be traced uh, back to, to this fixed point. So this is, uh, uh, this is a collection of such uh, renormalization group trajectories. And, uh, and, uh, and basically the space of fields of this uh, uh, a conformal field theory is, uh, is a tangent space. A space of relevant fields is a tangent space to this unstable manifold at the fixed point. And so to specify a trajectory, we need to specify the conformal field theory and the vector. So we have a conformal field theory, and this is a vector in the tangent space. All right, so this is one interpretation. And uh, another is, 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 is just uh, conformal perturbation theory. In principle, we could uh, uh, try to expand in terms of lambda. And uh, of course, there are all kinds of infrared difficulties here. But in principle, one could limit itself to finite size box, where presumably the, the, it's, uh, uh, the perturbation, perturbative series is, is uh, convergent. and. Uh, then make a thermodynamic uh, so we we do the perturbation theory in finite size and then send size to infinity and uh, in this size actually the the terms singular in, 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 in coupling constant emerge. So uh, uh, this is, if, as long as we are talking about uh, relevant operators, and of course uh, there might be a marginally relevant operators, I, I, I will try to keep things as simple as possible and ignore all the subtle possibilities. But um, uh, OK, so this is fine. Now I can. I can, uh, 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 I can recall that, in fact, the whole thing is embedded into a large infinite dimensional space where Wilson's renormalization group acts. Uh, this is sort of theories usually referred to. As, uh, uh, to as theory space. And, uh, uh, if we take this uh, full space, the tangent, uh, uh, the tangent space is the space of all fields uh, of the theory. So in principle, I could try to, to do something like that. Uh, right, uh, let me denote this alphas because I want to reserve i to, to something else. Uh, and I... No. A, okay. Uh, so with some coefficients, I add uh, also all this, all possible scalar irrelevant operators. All right. Uh, so. Um, uh, there are obviously difficulties with both interpretations here. First of all, uh, first of all, uh, if we, if I, well, one could imagine that there are some other fixed points, CFT prime or CFT prime or, or others upstairs, and there is a flow originating from them. One of them uh, arrives at the, uh, or some subspace of the. A subset of this trajectory uh, arrives in the infrared at this uh, given fixed point along certain relevant directions, and then and then that uh, irrelevant operators indicate this direction. But gen generic trajectory doesn't originate from any fixed point, so so.
So this is not really supposed to, all, to be always a quantum field theory. Well, uh, in, so, uh, well, formally, it, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it, 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 it relates to the fact, it could be also related to the fact that while in the, in the case of, uh, in the case of, um, uh, of relevant perturbation, this lambda could be understood as uh, coordinates that linearize the, the, the renormalization group flow, the beta functions, on the unstable manifold. These coordinates exist according, always exist according to, well, up to resonance terms, according to poincare dulac theorem. But uh, if you have these irrelevant operators, there are always infinitely many uh, resonances or infinitely many near resonances, so the, there is a small denominator problem. I'm not going to enter, uh, enter this problem. So, uh, so, uh, so it's a, uh, uh, the uh, RG interpretation is problematic, and uh, uh, conformal perturbation theory, of course, is non-renormalizable, so we need, a, we need a, a infinitely many counter terms. Well, formally, this is, no, this is not by itself an uh, obstacle, but because, because if we include all fields here, it's a sufficient resource for needed counter terms. But, uh, but, of course, there is a heavy dependence on regularization. Uh, renormalization conditions and so forth. The usual problems with non-renormalizable theories. In fact, uh, the, the the whole project is a is a uh, the whole project uh, motivation for the whole project was to. Uh, well, basically, was to understand. Of course, the theory space defined this way is not the space of quantum field theory. So, uh, it, it's it's related to an attempt to understand how the space of quantum field theory embedded into this theory space and what its structure and so forth. Mm, I am not going to dwell on that. If uh, time permits, I I will make a few remarks about that at the end. But it's very unlikely. Uh, see, well, I'm, I was always wondering when I listen to uh, other talks. I mean, I'm I'm impressed how many thi interesting things people manage to to say in one hour. When I start to talk myself, I mean, after a few introductory words, uh, you see. <laughs> I don't know, some, some, some sort of time contraction effect, I don't know. Uh, all right, so this is sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, why. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so I think I, I said what I mean by field theories, effective field theories, now integrability. No, uh, well, okay. Uh, uh, before integrability, let me make one remark uh, because I want to simplify the problem as much as possible. So uh, here I wrote a combination of all possible of, of all irrelevant fields. Okay, but uh, in principle, if uh, this, uh, so, if I denote f space of fields of local fields, uh, then, then I, I basically add a generic vector there, well, the uh, out of scalar fields. I will, I will usually mean the, the scalar fields. Well, but suppose we have some subspace f prime, which is, uh, which is closed with respect to uh, operator product expansion algebra. 
Okay? Then it's more or less clear, I mean, minute thought uh, 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 tells you that, that uh, one can add terms uh, out of this subalgebra consistently because, because the counter terms which are needed to, to, to cancel divergences are emerged from the operator product expansion and so we can, uh, this is sufficient. And, uh, and uh, so if I look at generic conformal field theory, whatever it is, I remember that its space of fields is a sum. Well, I write A, but I already spent this index. So let me put it capital A. As, uh, the, it is sum of... Uh, Spaces which are irre irreducible representations. So this is this is space of conformal, as a space of fields in conformal field theory. Uh, this is this, uh, uh, these are uh, these are uh, these are representations, irreducible representations of of. Uh, of two copies of Verasora algebra. This can be discrete, finite, discrete, or continuous set, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point. But uh, what's that? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Uh, OK, so this is uh, the structure. And this, uh, of course, because it's uh, it decomposes into left and right. This is uh, a product of uh, uh, of irreducible representations of uh, left and right Ferrosora algebras with uh, deltas denoting high suites. And of course, uh, each of these spaces, the delta, splits into level subspaces. Mm. And I will call it V delta plus S. Uh, these are eigenspaces of, uh, of course, as usual, of, uh, of uh, L naught operator and similarly for delta bar. So among, uh, among these uh, representations, there is also a, a vacuum module. The, 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 the representations for, for each the primary field is identity operator, right? So I denote that F naught, which is now V naught cross V naught bar, and uh, V naught is the vacuum irreducible vacuum model. All right. So this uh, this uh, basically V naught consists of uh, identity operator, energy momentum tensor, uh, and uh, its derivatives and so forth. And uh, mm, and uh, and composite fields built from from the energy momentum tensor. Uh, so let me, uh, if, 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 this are le uh, if this is split into level spaces, V sub S, then uh, let me just list few. First, members V naught uh, is one dimensional, V1 is empty because of the null vector, where V2 has uh, energy momentum tensor, V3 involves derivative, and uh, V4 involves uh, uh, t, t squared, is two dimensional and involves T squared and T2 prime, and so forth. So it, uh, this F naught closes with respect to operator product expansion algebra, and so we can limit this perturbation uh, to, to, to make things as simple as possible, we can limit this perturbation mm, to the 
fields from this space F0. In fact, we are interested uh, only in, in scalar fields first, and uh, secondly, uh, I mean, der total derivatives do not, uh, do not contribute because we have integral there, of course. And so the, the interesting space is F0 hat, which is, uh, which is basically, I, did, I denote it this way, which is basically the sum from S equals to 1 to infinity, Vs hat uh, tends to Vs bar <coughs> hat and, uh, and, uh, and Vs uh, here. Is a hat is a factor space Vs over L minus one, Vs minus one. So I get rid of the derivatives. And now, of course, uh, the the uh, many of these fields disappear. If I put hats here, then uh, this become empty, and uh, so forth. Uh, it's uh, well, I, I actually, it's, it's a little bit boring, but, but in fact, uh, I, I just remind you that the, the odd subspaces are empty for, for uh, all the way up to, up to V9, where uh, the first non-empty non space appears. This will... Uh, this is one dimensional. Well, the dimensions are, are easily computed from the character, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, when you get rid uh, of, uh, of the derivatives, chi, ca, uh, uh, chi hat of q is something like q plus uh, 1 minus q squared times eta of q, where it is usual the Dickens function. Anyways, it's easy to compute, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the thing which I want to remark at first is that the odd subspaces are, uh, of, uh, are, are spent by total derivative all the way until, until uh, V9. Now, uh, this is all about this particular space F0, but uh, now let me... Let me say about, uh, about integrability, what we want. Well, uh, of course, the notion of integrability, well, at least to me, uh, 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 integrability in quantum field theory is not really understood. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's not like in finite dimensional systems where we have a, a clear definition of integrable system, due to Poincaré, I think. Uh, uh, because basically, I mean, you have infinitely many uh, degrees of freedom, and uh, then uh, how infinitely many commuting integrals of motion you need to, to have integrable is not really clear. But at least, uh, so we basically have instead uh, some sort of paradigm of integrability, which involves, I don't know, Young-Baxter algebras. Uh, and in particular, it involves a system of local, infinite set of local integrals of motion. That, uh, uh, the, uh, so what we have is a paradigm, which is a kind of uh, mm, uh, constru uh, construction and the collection of examples which share some, uh, some, some common properties and one of these properties is an uh, infinite set okay uh, local integrals of motion. Uh, again, all right, yeah, let me skip speculations. Uh, so what is integral, uh, uh, local integral of motion? It's basically 
as usual, uh, something very trivial. I like trivial things. Uh, a, a pair of local fields, A, B. Uh, that satisfy the continuity equation dz bar uh, equals to dz b. Uh, here and below I use the uh, the complex coordinates as usual and uh, uh, because uh, because of this continuity equation one can define the integral which is a dz plus b dz bar over uh, any contour which doesn't change when you deform the contour so that is the integral of motion so this is integral of motion, local integral of motion. All right. Um, so we want infinitely many of those uh, 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 for integrability. And let me denote at this point this uh, infinitely many. I will erase that. Denote them. Uh, these pairs ts plus 1 and theta s minus 1. Uh, this index s uh, runs some infinite number of values. Set of values and uh, I will usually, uh, I will associate it with the spins of this field. If there are more than one field of the same spin, there could be some additional indices. But, but in, in, in my examples, this is uh, not, uh, not relevant. So the, in this case, we can have the, the integral ts plus 1 dz plus theta s minus 1 dz bar uh, of spin s. Uh, the, 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 the operator itself, the integral of motion. All right. Um, so here, uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, it's 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 really in, important the question how how infinitely many is enough because because for instance any conformal field theory has infinitely many. Uh, uh, local commuting integrals of motion, but obviously not every conformal field theory is integrable. And those, uh, those, uh, uh, those, uh, uh, those uh, local integrals of motion are, uh, are just the, the, the fields entering the, the, the vacuum module. V naught, if you tensor it by the identity operator, the at the, at the right, the, this uh, thing is spent by, a, besides identity operator, by t, t squared, and uh, 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 all composite fields built from t. These are all holomorphic, holomorphic fields, so they are, they satisfy uh, uh, Cauchy-Riemann equation, which is exactly uh, this equation, only with the right-hand side equal to zero, uh, with the theta parts equal to zero. All right, uh, so so we can always uh, have that. Uh, now, if 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 I come back to to perturbed conformal field theory, uh, then uh, then it's uh, it's sort of known for long how to 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 try to uh, I mean to at least try to discover integrability in this sort of of field theories. I will say just few words. This is uh, I think this is kind of uh, well known. So if I have a CFT, and for simplicity I assume that there is one uh, relevant field, uh, then, then and, and I take, uh, let's say, T squared field 
uh, and take bz bar. But generally, with this perturbation, I will have the right-hand side, which is a power series uh, in lambda with some uh, local fields uh, q sub k. All right, this, uh, this uh, series necessarily uh, truncates at finitely many terms because lambda has positive mass dimension, and eventually accompanying fields would have a negative, dim uh, negative dimension or arbitrary negative dimension if we assume that the spectrum of dimension is, is bounded from below. I mean, it truncates. So one can analyze one by one uh, the fields uh, entering the, this, this series and find if they can be adjusted in such a way that they, they become uh, to total derivatives. Okay? Uh, the derivatives with respect to z. Uh, I'm not going to, to repeat that. You, uh, in many cases, this is possible just by counting the dimensionality of the spaces and seeing that this, uh, the, the space in which subspace of the subspace of the space of, conform, uh, of fields in conformal field theory in which this uh, field uh, 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 has to be found is, is spanned by total derivatives. So one, one really don't need to comp compute anything. All right? So this argument uh, kind of allows one to establish, for instance, uh, the, the integrability of uh, uh, C less than 1 CFT perturbed by the degenerate operator phi 1, 3. That's, uh, the operator which has a null vector on the level three. Uh, at least a few first local integrals of motion can be, uh, can be established uh, reliably by this kind of argument. Well, I mean, the, the infinite set requires more sophisticated, I mean, proving existence of infinite set requires more sophisticated analysis. Now, I want to, to spend a little time trying to see what is going on if I try to apply the same thing to irrelevant things, right? So, so what I do is I I, I, I recall that my, my, I, want, I, I limit myself again to this space. <coughs> uh, these are parts of the, the vacuum model, spinless with, uh, uh, with derivatives factored out. And so my, my, my term here, at, uh, for the moment, I will ignore the relevant part. Uh, my terms here have basically the form sum from s equals 1 to infinity. So that's mod ij integral. And I have here t s plus 1 i t bar s plus 1 j. Uh, d to x, where t uh, s j is the basis, j index uh, j labels the basis in the in the subspace uh, uh, v hat s. Okay, so this is basically uh, the most general structure, uh, uh, most general structure of the of the. Uh, of this kind of irrelevant perturbation, uh, it helps to remember that this coupling constants S, I, J, uh, they have mass negative mass dimension, which is uh, mass to the minus two S. All right. So this uh, series, if I remember these few terms, the series would have a Mm, would have a form alpha 1 uh, tt bar. 
this is from the, I, 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 I dropped the identity operator, this is not interesting, plus alpha 3 uh, t squared, uh, t squared bar, I, I write it this way, plus uh, alpha 5, uh, alpha 5, um, ij, because the, the fifth space I didn't write it, is already two-dimensional. Uh, it, it will have t6i, um, t bar 6j, and so forth. Uh, then uh, here we have only odd indices up to, up to, to some um, uh, level, because uh, I mentioned that there are no uh, no spaces with odd with odd level here. All right. So I try to repeat the same argument here, and then uh, again I take uh, now d z t bar squared, for instance. This is the simplest uh, possibility, and I find that it it, it should have a uh, it should have a, a form alpha 1 times q1 plus alpha 2, alpha, uh, uh, okay. I, I will arrange them uh, in the order of growing dimension of the operators. So there would be potentially alpha 1 squared q2. Uh, two. There would be potentially terms like alpha 3 and uh, plus uh, some c times alpha 1 cubed, because alpha 3 uh, has the same dimension as alpha uh, 1 cubed. I'm uh, simplifying, oversimplifying a little bit, but that's not relevant. So we will have a, a series like that. And the dimensions of, this, uh, of these fields here, by counting dimensions of the, of the, mm, of the operators here, is going to be, uh, I, will, I will mention left and right conformal dimensions so that the spin here is 3, and uh, so it's going to be 5, 2. This, this will have a 6, 3. This will have a 7, 4, and, uh, and so forth. So... Uh, the, the, the right dimension, the left dimension is always uh, greater by 3 than the right dimension. And, uh, and, and so for the first few uh, terms here, it's absolutely obvious that they are total derivatives, right? Because either right or left part hits the, the odd subspaces, and so it, it's necessarily a total derivative. But that, uh, that, persists, uh, that persists only up to level 9. So at a certain point, we will have, a, uh, we will have operator uh, which... Uh, but here you're imagining turning on by these irrelevant terms, which are philosoph made of Pilasoro without turning on any of the... Yeah, at this point, I concentrate attention on that. I will come back to the mixed, uh, to the mixed thing. All right, so, so at a certain point, we hit uh, this, uh, we hit this, uh, I call this A5, mm. T9, uh, uh, T bar 6, uh, uh, beta, we, because t, uh, the 9 subspace is one dimensional, this one is, uh, has, I think, dimension 2, if I remember correctly, so... There is a sum over beta here, and uh, so this is not automatically, automatically, uh, automatically one-dimensional, uh, zero, uh, automatically a derivative, but it's a, it's a, this co coefficient here is is a combination of alpha five, uh, alpha beta, uh, some kind of alpha one squared alpha three f of 1, 5. So we want, we have uh, basically, uh, basically uh, 3, 4, 
four dimensionless parameters here, more than enough to adjust them to kill the non-derivative terms here. And, and, and you can repeat this exercise very long way into the, into the, uh, into the, into the levels. And as expected, at certain levels, somewhere between 30 and 40, the number, the dimensionality of odd spaces overcomes the number of parameters available to, to kill the, mm, the, the non-derivative terms. So this argument, strictly speaking, doesn't work. I mean, the, the, the problem hits, the, I mean, the, the same problem is hit uh, sooner for higher integrals of motion. But anyway, it's, it's important that the argument doesn't work. But the fact that, that it works for so many levels is quite remarkable. And I think it was, uh, it was noticed, I think, may, by many people. And, and uh, I think it is the origin of sort of uh, community knowledge, uh, which, uh, which I think persists for, exists for, for at least uh, 25 years, that uh, in some sense, a, a perturbation by TT bar is integrable. So that's a... Although, uh, although proof doesn't exist. Uh, uh, it was supported, actually, by this expectation, was supported by Alyosha's calculation of... of uh, integrable theories, uh, real quantum field theories, describing flow from, from uh, the critical Ising model down to, to critical Ising model, which arrives at this, uh, at this um, uh, lower fixed point along, exactly along this, uh, the, along, not, not, not exactly along this field, but inside the field, uh, the, the subspace F0, a similar for supersymmetric uh, Liouville theory, which also flows down uh, to a critical Ising model in the spontaneously broken regime. Uh, and uh, in all cases, this is the case with different kind of coefficients, uh, different va directions along this, if not. So, so does it become relevant along the flow eventually? No, no. Okay. No, it's a, it's a, we, we look at the, at the flow from, let me be a little bit more specific. That's what I, I'm, I'm starting to, to swallow things. So we have a, let me, so this is the critical Ising model, right? Fixed point. And this is critical Ising model. Okay, this is a flow down to, so it arrives at the, the, the infrared, this is massless flow. It arrives in the infrared fixed point along some irrelevant direction. And this direction is shown through uh, thermodynamic patterns, that's analysis, and so forth, to lay inside a knot of this, uh, of this theory. So in some sense, uh, this effective field theory is, is integrable because the whole flow is integrable. Right. So now uh, let me come to to to, to um, how we can possibly analyze uh, th this kind of analysis doesn't work. Trying to do perturbation theory doesn't help, and so forth. So how we could address this this question? All right. Let me uh, let me instead analyze the the scattering map. All right, associated with this theory. And, well, all right, I could, I could keep these terms and say something about, uh, uh, something about uh, massless S matrices, but, uh, and I know that this is useful device in some cases, but I'm not very comfortable with massless S matrices because it's an ambiguous notion. So I will add 
a relevant term. Uh, and the theory which I will actually consider will be uh, this uh, uh, this uh, sum is not needed, uh, this uh, CFT perturbed by 1, 3, plus again this uh, sum of, uh, of uh, possible operators which I uh, which I uh, which I uh, still keep no denoting alpha i or i. I will be a little bit more specific in a moment. Mm. Let me first concentrate on this one. This is a, a, a quantum group restriction of sine gordon model. So we can this is a massive field theory, and it has S matrix. It's uh, well known that, uh, that if we have integrable theory, enough, enough uh, integrals of motion, S matrix is purely elastic. That means uh, the set of rapidities uh, in the in state is equal to the set of rapidities uh, in the in the out state, so the set of rapidities uh, doesn't change, and also it's factorizable. Well, that's kinematically uh, a kinematical consequence of the first one. That is uh, ex uh, the, the the S matrix expressed. Uh, through uh, two, uh, two to two S matrix, which I denote as uh, a theta. It could have some indices A1, A2, uh, B1, B2, uh, uh, associated with spices of particles uh, of the same mass. But uh, it will be, for, for most part of analysis, it will be completely irrelevant. This, of course, uh, this uh, two-particle two matrix satisfy, satisfy standard uh, unitarity T and, uh, and crossing analyticity and also Young-Baxter equation. I am not going to discuss that. That's fairly well known. But uh, 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 what I will stress is that, remind actually, that all this equation uh, admit uh, the CDD ambiguity. Given two body as matrix as not, you could modify it by, this it depends on theta. Theta is different between two rapidities uh, times some factor u of theta, which satisfies something like that, theta. u of theta equals to 1 over u of minus theta and equal to u of i pi minus theta. All right? In the, in the, in the physical domain of scattering, this is a phase factor. Uh, all right, so I just remind that. Um, and now, uh, and now, uh, let me assume that we have this theory we know as matrix, and we want to treat this operator perturbatively. Okay, uh, uh, find corrections to as matrix uh, from these operators. Okay. Uh, obviously, the the leading correction, the the linear in alpha correction is going to uh, alpha i corrections uh, to S matrix. Uh, here I have in mind the full S matrix. And the corrections involve matrix elements of the, of the kind A of theta 1 prime A of theta m 
prime out state. The operator O, I, I keep the index, but it's not very relevant here. A of theta 1, A of theta n in. This is a correction which describes uh, n, n to m <coughs> scattering. All right. Uh, well, I mean, this uh, existence of 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 of, uh, uh, of this uh, scattering would uh, uh, non-zero scattering of this sort uh, would uh, 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 definitely br brings us outside the, at least this paradigm of of integrability. So we need to 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 look for special perturbation for which this is not the case. All right. All right. Well, I, I, I want to mention here that the perturbation theory in, in, in around integrable theories is is old subject. It was initiated, I think, as, as, as long ago as 96 by Delfina, Mussard, and Simonetti. But it's very difficult and uh, usually doesn't go beyond. It's, it's difficult perturbation theory. It doesn't go beyond linear order. That's what I will need here. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, there is an, a sort of obvious formula which, uh, which says that the correction, the, the full amplitude uh, theta 1, I, I simplify a little bit notations, and prime theta 1 theta n uh, expanded uh, in terms of this alpha i is going to, to be uh, this is in, out, this is a, a, a S matrix element, is going to be uh, expressed in terms of of uh, ordered exponential as usual, plus uh, I alpha j integral OJ of x, plus higher order terms, uh, and we have uh, uh, theta 1, theta m, I had M here, and I had N here, so. And this, uh, this, uh, these are states and operators in unperturbed theory, of course. So we basically, in the leading order, we need this matrix element between the states. And uh, uh, this is this matrix element, theta 1, theta M, and theta OJ, theta uh, one theta, these are primes, not necessarily equal theta m. In out, that doesn't matter. Uh, but these are generally called form factors. And for that reason, the, this sort of perturbation theory is usually referred to as form factor perturbation theory. All right. Uh, so, how it is possible that that uh, we keep uh, purely elastic na nature of the uh, of the scattering? Uh, well, uh, of the scattering uh, by adding this sort of perturbations. Uh, well, first of all, this uh, this matrix elements are all uh, obtained uh, by crossing from basic form factors. which are elements of uh, OI and uh, theta 1, theta n uh, between, uh, between n particle states, uh, arbitrary n particle states. Uh, and, uh, and this satisfies a collection of linear equations. Uh, I'm not going to, I mean, because the, the time is almost over and I'm somewhere in the middle, uh, I'm not going to even even list uh, or name these equations. Uh, the most important of them is the so-called uh, for me is so-called annihilation Pole equation that uh, which says 
that when uh, one, two of these thetas uh, are different by i pi, let's say theta 1 equals to uh, theta 2 plus i pi plus epsilon, this develops a pole with the, with the coefficient which is proportional to 1 minus product of S matrices from 2 to n uh, as of theta 1 minus theta j, j. Uh, and uh, uh, now it's proportional to, to 0, O, and uh, theta 3, two, partic two particles eliminated. Okay, uh, this is more or less uh, related to to the to the pole associated with uh, one particle reducible re, uh, one particle reducible diagrams. Um, okay, I'm not going to be very detailed, but but if you look at these equations, you see that uh, they admit they are consistent with. Well, I forgot to say this. Th there is an integration here. And so the matrix element which enters uh, is always multiplied after integration by delta by energy momentum uh, delta function. All right. So what we want to have is this thing to vanish on the energy momentum surface for all matrix elements which violate which violate uh, pure elastic nature. And, and for, that, for that matter, I, uh, I, if I denote this f o f of theta d, theta 1, theta n, uh, it's, 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 it's very clear, it's very easy to see that these um, equations admit uh, ansatz of this form. Uh, f o of theta 1 theta n is the sum over i to n e to the theta i f plus let me remove this o f plus and put it downstairs o of theta 1 theta n plus uh, e to the minus theta i f minus O of also theta n. Uh, we, uh, because, uh, I mean, these are these sums, of course, are light cone uh, momenta of the uh, light cone components of the of total momentum of the state here. So, so generally, they vanish at the at the at the energy momentum surface. Function and variable on the left hand side, on the right hand side, or uh, f is a function of uh, n variables in the left hand side, and there are two functions f plus and f minus, uh, which are also functions of. But they, uh, the, but what I'm saying is that they have this uh, this factor, which is proportional to to the uh, left and right components of the momentum, and therefore it vanishes at the energy momentum surface. It, va it vanishes at the support of this delta function. All right. Uh, this is, uh, well, naively one would say, all right, that means that the operator O is just the sum of derivatives of A plus plus dz bar A minus because this derivative is exactly elaborate these things. But, but there is a subtlety at the level of, of four point four particle correlation function because the support of this delta function is exactly where the, the, the interesting part uh, resides, the, the diagonal, the purely elastic part resides. And therefore, the zeros uh, of these of this factors can very well cancels can very well be cancelled 
by the annihilation poles of associated associated um, uh, of associated fac uh, form factor, and this is indeed possible, and it is possible to to analyze exactly. So there, inside the space, or this is um, the 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 form factor bootstrap equations are linear system of linear equations. So there is a vector space of solutions, which is. Uh, so let me put it in, in a, a bit, uh, in a little bit more explicit way. So, so uh, uh, there is a four factor bootstrap equations which I didn't, didn't list, but this annihilation pole is one of them. This is linear system, and so uh, there is a vector space of solutions, okay, which is supposed to be in, the field the in any field theory, if we have a field theory behind, uh, which is supposed to be isomorphic to the space of fields, and indeed, for many cases, this is proven. Now, uh, Inside this space, we can look at the subspace. Let me call it FFFI, which is a subspace, which has this integrable property that all the form factors, uh, all the form factors with n greater than four, uh, vanish. on energy momentum surface, but uh, uh, n equals 4, but n equals 4 do not. Okay. There is a clearly such subspace, and uh, this subspace, I mean, the, um, I mean, the four-factor bootstrap uh, program is, is rather complicated, but, but uh, some remarkable success was achieved during the last, uh, let's say, decade in, uh, in many papers, but remarkably in the paper, in the series of papers by uh, Miva Jimbo and Smirnov. Mm, I think it is a series of papers from 2002 through 2012, 2007 through 2012. Uh, where they managed to construct some sort of fermionic, uh, where they addressed the sine Gordon model. Uh, sine Gordon model and its, its quantum group reductions, which is uh, C less than 1 and C less than 1 CFT plus phi 1, 3 perturbation, which is quantum group reduction of the sine Gordon model. All right, so they managed to construct some sort of fermionic operators acting in this, in this space, and uh, that allows them to identify a sol some solutions of the, of the uh, form factor bootstrap equation with, uh, with, uh, with vectors in the, in the space of states of uh, conformal field theory, uh, original conformal field theory. I'm not going to enter details, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, this also allows one to identify solutions uh, uh, of the four-factor bootstrap equation 
with the subspace F0. So we have some sort of F0 uh, subspace F0 inside, uh, uh, inside the solutions of, of for factor bootstrap equations, uh, which, is, uh, which is isomorphic to F0 and the, the subspace of, of descendants of identity operators. And also, it is possible to, to, to identify solutions which are associated with this, uh, uh, separate components of this, uh, of this um, sum. OK? So from this, one can isolate the solutions which constitute this sort of integrable, uh, integrable um, a perturbation and uh, uh, integrable uh, solutions of the form factor uh, bootstrap and the result which I just quote the, uh, the calculations are heavy F not I has uh, the, the form of sum for odd number of S, S 3, 5 and so forth and uh, and each subspace here is one dimensional. So there is a, uh, there is a, mm, one field, one irrelevant field for each uh, odd number. It's uh, a spin is zero and dimension, the conformal dimension are S plus one, S plus one. Uh, and they have this property. So these are, these are natural candidates for integrable, integrable perturbations. Well, this, this field uh, actually can be understood as follows. So basically, uh, all right, uh, these fields can be understood as follows. Let me, let me remind, <coughs> I think I need three minutes for that. DZ bar, let me, let me come back to this continuity equation that uh, S minus one. And, uh, and uh, also because of parity, I have a, I have a Z to replace it to Z bar uh, copy of this equation. These fields have spins uh, minus S minus one and, and so forth. And uh, let me consider, I like this exercise, so let me, do it. Uh, let me consider the, the correlation function. Okay, uh, it's simple consequence of this equation that this correlation function, which generally would depend on the difference z minus z prime. z here I, I is a shorthand for z, z bar. Uh, that this correlation function is, in fact, a constant. It's very easy. You, hit, you, you take a, let's say, dz bar derivative. Here, using this equation, you convert it to dz derivative. Uh, using the fact that it depends on the difference, move it here. Uh, uh, apply a second equation, and then the result cancels with the second term. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, yes. And then this is the S plus one, plus one, the first one, and the second one. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm getting sloppy. I'm always sloppy. All right, uh, so, so, um, so this, this equation, this relation can be promoted to, so this uh, becomes zero and this, this can be a similar calculation allows one to promote this to the operator equation. So if I take this product and consider operator product expansion here, which generally would have the form sum of some coefficients of z minus z prime times O alpha let's say, O alpha of z prime, uh, in fact, uh, contains a single term, 
with the coefficient uh, which is uh, constant, which I take an identity, and I call this op associated operator x, uh, s plus 1 of z, plus uh, all sorts of terms uh, which are derivatives. C twiddle alpha of z minus z bar times d of some, some fields. So up to derivatives, uh, up to derivatives, uh, this is uh, this is just a single field with the coefficient one. All right. Uh, so this uh, this uh, field uh, x s plus one is a natural candidate. Well, this is this can be understood as a composite field uh, T s plus one, T s plus one bar. Uh, and, uh, well, basically the meaning is that if I want to form this composite field, uh, if I f want to form this composite field, then, uh, then uh, I need to take this operator product expansion, which generally has some singular terms, and then I need to subtract singular terms uh, before taking, taking the limit z to z prime. And this second term exactly takes care of of the singular terms. So this, by definition, is, is x is plus 1, the, the field entering here. And it is the same field up to normalization, which enters this decomposition. Well, the only thing I, I'm, I'm way out of time, but, uh, but again, uh, the, imp I think I, I, I need to say important thing, which is that, so the, basically what we have is uh, up to linear terms, the integrable thing is ACFT plus lambda phi 1, 3 plus some alpha s, s equals 1, 3, 5, and so forth. And this is multiplied by this so there is a, a sort of infinite dimensional uh, still infinite dimensional space of potentially integrable uh, theories mm, and uh, and uh, but it's it's way smaller than than the original space right so and finally. <coughs> This from factor calculation allows one to to uh, compute corrections to the scattering phase, uh, to the scattering amplitudes, and it turns out that all these all these operators uh, actually bring uh, corrections to the CDD factor. So the the, the basic S matrix. Uh, this is two by two S matrix. Is this not? times a scalar factor, which is 1 plus uh, I alpha uh, S sum, sum amplitude A S plus 1 of theta. Where, uh, in fact, this uh, A S plus 1 are exactly computed, and these are Sine, uh, hyperbolic sine s plus uh, s plus one over two theta divided by square uh, sine squared of this divided by sine theta. So it's up to it's a uh, sine theta times some polynomials uh, s polynomials. Uh, uh, I don't know how to call them. Let's call them S plus 1. Of course, I am theta. These are not Legendre polynomials, so P, Q, Q. Okay. Of course, I am theta. It's, 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 it's uh, more or less uh, Chebyshev polynomials here. But anyway, mm, anyway, that's, uh, the, the, the message is that this kind of perturbation cor uh, brings correction to the CDD factor. Now, 
uh, there is a natural conjecture that if we limit the perturbation to this subspace spent by this operator, uh, the renormalization could be made within this space. That means con counter terms which, which uh, are needed to cancel perturbative divergences are, uh, are, are inside this space. So in principle, at least perturbatively, this can be developed. Uh, theory which is not done, but but um, but uh, but I mean that's potentially interesting thing, and also and also uh, mm, and also then it correct uh, brings corrections to further corrections to the scattering phase to the to the CDD factor here. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Well, I mean, the, the young Baxter equation doesn't fix the CDD factor. Okay, suppose we start with some particular solution and ask, okay, are there small deformation that the solution deform? Of course, there's an obvious. Yeah, this is a very good question, but uh, let me just say conclusion and then ask me this question. I will be happy to, to discuss this. Okay, mm. so so basically, I need to to wrap it up. I, I had in mind to discuss what you are asking, but uh, but I, I I think I I have to stop now. Uh, it, uh, it's already over time. So so basically, this is the result. There are mm, some speculations about the structure of this series beyond the, the leading order, and also there are some. Some uh, some interesting possibilities about solvable cases of this uh, kind of theories, but uh, that's for next time. Thank you. Questions? deformations. And is it, is it known, for example, whether all the temporal transformations should just look for the particular transformations should just be medication of CDD factors? Uh, well, the, I, I could I could read out two questions in your question. First, uh, first um, uh, one one question is one question is uh, is basically the, the the structure of higher orders. Um, are them also CDD factors, and that I think conjecturally correct. Uh, the other question which I can uh, tell me which one you are asking. The other one is 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 basically what is the effect of the C D factors? Well when people also ask okay well, how how many C D factors are there classified do they correspond like, well uh, okay correspond to the okay C D D factor is arbitrary the analytic function which satisfies uh, these equations. Okay, it is 2 pi i periodic function, therefore. And, uh, well, uh, ideally it's a meromorphic function or entire function or whatever. And so it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's periodic, so it's controlled by Fourier components. So this, in fact, this alpha s are sort of germs of the Fourier coefficients of that, of the logarithm of this u. And, uh, and, uh, and also, alternatively, one could uh, control that by singularities, right? The, the poles and the zeros and, and perhaps more complicated singularities. And uh, here, I would be happy to, to comment about the situation, uh, the, about singularities. I think uh, the, I th uh, it's a, so in principle, one could do this thing. Try to analyze the physical content of the theory depending on this CDD factor. And, uh, and with, uh, with Alyosha long ago, we spent a lot of time, and I think many people also did that, but I, I never saw anything published on this, on this kind. So let's say I have a, a, smart, a legal asthmatic, sign Gordon or whatever, uh, of theta, and then I, I replace it by 
by s of theta times u of theta, where uh, u is a meromorphic function with, with some number of poles thrown by, I don't know, by chance, like, uh, like when, you, when you play dice. OK, well, uh, in order, uh, you need to satisfy this. And some rather weak properties, like you don't want singularities on the physical uh, sheet of the Riemann surface, which is a strip, physical strip, uh, which is an uh, imaginary part of theta between pi and 0. That's half of the period, uh, because otherwise that would violate causality. But, uh, but, but otherwise, I mean, the, the other strip, you could feel it with whatever. Uh. So with this, one can try to do what, what we can do, thermodynamic beta ansatz. That's, uh, that's the only thing which is more or less automatic. And uh, the result is that unless you adjust, adjust the CDD poles in very peculiar way, uh, the solution for the ground state energy, well, there's what CDD, what uh, TBA yields, the thermodynamic beta ansatz. It yields the ground state energy in the finite volume in the, on the circle. So this E of R behaves well at large R, but cannot be brought to arbitrary small uh, arbitrary small r. Develops singular, generally develops singularity at finite r naught. Okay? And this singularity it gen generally is a square root square root singularity. So uh, in some sense, uh, the, the S matrices, which, uh, which, uh, which differ from good S matrices by arbitrary CDD factors, cannot correspond to quantum field theories in Wilsonian sense. So they cannot have ultraviolet limit as a finite central charge fixed point. You, you, you didn't assume that either, right? You have this effective field theory. Right? Hmm? You didn't assume that you have an extent. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I just tell you the situation. And, uh, and so generically, we, 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 we have the singularity. And so either we have to, to uh, Either we have to assume that most of them do not correspond to any field theory at all, but more tempting is to generalize the concept of field theory. Okay? And that's, that's basically what I started with. And that's the uh, go beyond the Wilsonian definition of, of field theory. See, what we have is, is, is I mean, Wilson, Wilson t taught us to to find first a fixed point, and then, and then uh, do a stable, uh, unstable manifold effect. All right, we can, we can just like I said already, we can find the higher fixed point and enlarge the space. And uh, then we know, of course, that there are infinitely many fixed points all the way up to the heaven. And so, if I, if I take the collection of this all unstable union of all these unstable manifolds and try to, the, as a space, and try to compactify it any conceivable way, the most of its elements do not have an ultraviolet fixed point at all. So the effective central charge as a, fun a function of energy is not going to, to have a, any finite limit at e going to infinity. It's probably going to, uh, it's probably going to, well, it's, uh, it's not uh, going to constant. Yeah, it, 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 it should grow. It should grow. Okay? And the most, I mean, looking at the singularity, the most natural thing to assume is that it grows like square root of e. 
right? Because remember the density of states of quantum field theory, density of states, rho of E, behaves like exponential of square root of central charge times energy with some number which I cannot remember now. So if the, the central charge, uh, effective central charge, behaves like square root of E itself, this goes exponentially. And, uh, and then the partition function would have a singularity at finite, at finite temperature, like a Hagedorn transition. And this kind of density of state is already of a stringy nature. But there is another possibility. You are developing another dimension, like the Kessler Kaluza Klein factor of uh, growth. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, that's the that's one of the interpretations that another dimensions are opening. Uh, so, so trying to sort this out is 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 trying to sort this out potentially is uh, was the main motivation of this of this uh, of this study. Uh, so that's uh, where we are at the moment. Okay, very urgent questions. I think. Uh, again.